Hello, fellow badass Benzo Warriors. It's Debbie. Now that the dumpster fire shit show of 2020 is over, I want to start the new year out with um, some words of wisdom and hopefully some motivation. So just a quick update if you've been following me. I am three months into my third taper attempt. I am doing a water titration off of clonazepam. And first month, I was a little ambitious, crashed pretty hard after that first month, slowed my taper down considerably. And so I am feeling better and I'm going to continue to go slow. So let's get into it. Um, as usual, I have notes uh, because my benzo brain can't remember shit. So uh, number one, stay in the moment. This can definitely be tough. And when you think about it, um, a lot of our anxiety and stress comes from thinking about what if, or we're thinking about all the shit that's happened up to this point in time. So yeah, look, we are all pissed off at our doctors. We're pissed off at the pharmaceutical companies. We anguish over friends and family that we've lost or jobs or income. Um, you know, the, the, the list can be long. Um, and then we get stuck in the future going, oh my God, how long is this going to take? How bad is the taper going to be? Um, what more things am I going to lose? But there is nothing, absolutely nothing productive in either one of those. And if you look at all of the sages over time that talk about staying in the moment, it's because a lot of the stress and anxiety that we create for ourselves is thinking about the shit that might happen that honestly usually never happens. And so just trying to stay in the moment, one step at a time, one cut at a time. Um, number two. This is something that I harp on repeatedly in my other videos. And for me, I think is the single most important thing that we can really focus and work on. And that is watching your thoughts and your words. Because every single cell in your body is listening to what you're thinking and what you're saying, just waiting for a cue. And look, there are tons and tons of studies out there that show the power of our thoughts and our words in helping accelerate healing in our body. So this just isn't some, you know, la la thing, you know, that sounds good. There are, it, there are actual scientific medical studies out there about the importance of it. So I know it's really hard to stop talking and thinking about how shitty this is. It is hard. It's for me, the hardest thing that I have ever been through in my life. Um, and I also know that, you know, the flip side to that is I can't sit here and, you know, try to do these affirmations of I feel great and I feel awesome because you know what, for me, that feels completely unauthentic. It doesn't feel true. It feels really fakey and there are people out there that will say, say it anyway, even if you don't feel it. Um, and I'm not saying that there probably isn't power in that, but maybe what you can do that does feel more authentic is to say things like, I'm strong because you are strong. My God, look at what you're doing. Say how resilient you are because again, look at how resilient you are. You are getting through this. Um, talk about um, how you're going to beat this because you are going to beat this. You're beating it every day. I mean, your body is absolutely amazing. Celebrate that. Think about all the things that have healed in your life, broken bones and illnesses and burns and cuts and, and just a ton of things. Your body is an amazing machine and it is working its tail off every single day to heal us. And we will heal because there are too many stories out there of people that have healed from this and we are going to be one of them. So number three, 
what you resist persists. And this one can be pretty tough. And I think that it's really normal um, that when we are experiencing symptoms um, to tense up uh, and to have a physical response to it. You know, we get a, a dumping of adrenal, adrenaline and other bad chemicals in our body. But for me, as an example, um, I've really battled vertigo um, in the last year. But what I've noticed is that I'm feeling vertigo and then I get tense because I think, oh my God, I get in that future thinking, what if I pass out? What if I embarrass myself? What if I hit my head? You know, all those kind of stories that, you know, I start telling myself. Um, and then it just makes my neck stiff and my shoulders stiff. And then that just makes the vertigo worse. And so it just becomes this loop. Um, an analogy I like to use is, you know, it's like burning your hand and then sticking it under hot water. It makes absolutely no sense. So use tools. There's a ton of tools out there and I've talked about them in my other videos. Um, for me, probably the best tools that I have is breath work. So box breathing, four, seven, eight breathing. Max Strom has a great video on YouTube. It's a 30 minute session and it really helps um, kind of take your parasympathetic nervous system, the system that calms our bodies down, kicks it in. Um, and so I've had times where I've been very, very anxious and I've not felt very good at all. And I've, I've done that session and it's amazing how much better I felt. Um, you know, doing meditation, yoga, um, videos, motivational videos, music. Um, you know, as an example, when I got up this morning, uh, and I'm going to use a word that I say not to use, I felt really shitty. And my first instinct was all I want to do is lay down on the couch and do absolutely nothing. And then I decided, no, um, I may not be able to do the things that I could do before benzos, but can I do something? And so I made myself take a shower and I made myself put on some makeup. And then I made myself do a load of laundry and I made myself do the dishes. And then I made myself listen to some motivational songs and I even did some dancing. And so, you know, the paradox in this is that, you know, think about the times like maybe where you've joined a gym, you know, and you were going to go three times a week and then that lasted for a month and then you didn't go at all because we lack the self-discipline. And so, What's so interesting is that here we are in one of the most challenging experiences of our life that require a monumental amount of willpower and self-discipline. And all I can say about that is that in exercising the willpower and the self-discipline to make ourselves do things that we don't want to do, not only help us to feel better, but create these good behaviors so that when we get past this, we're going to have some really, really good habits that we've built from this. Um, another thing that I do that might sound a little goofy to some people, um, but it seems to kind of work is when I'm feeling shitty is I just go sit down in a chair and I kind of go inside. And what I mean by that is I just really allow myself to experience what I'm feeling. You know, where am I feeling it? What exactly does it feel like? Um, and I just, again, kind of allow it to be instead of resisting it and fighting it. And, and I'll even mentally just kind of hug it and reassure my body that, hey, you are doing a great job. Thank you so much for um, fighting this battle. Um, the next one, gratitude which again, I know can be a real struggle because there are times where it's like, I don't feel grateful for shit, um, but it's such an important component. So what I try to do when I'm thinking those shitty thoughts or I'm saying those shitty words is to recognize it and immediately go into something that I feel grateful for. 
And look, it doesn't have to be some big, huge thing. I mean, for God's sakes, there are people on this planet that don't even have clean drinking water. I can walk over to my sink and I can turn it on and get clean drinking water. I have food. I have a roof over my head. Um, I may have lost friends and family because of this process, but there are a few that have really risen to the occasion, and I am so grateful for them. I mean, hell, I'm grateful for days when the sun is shining, and I can just go stand out and feel the sun on my body, which is good for us because we get vitamin D, which helps our serotonin, which helps us to feel better. And then just be grateful that you've made it through another day, and you are one day closer to being done with this one day closer to this amazing amazing life so um in conclusion i am not trying to minimize what i or you or anybody else is going through again for me this is the hardest thing i have ever gone through in my life but at 61 i will be damned if this is going to be the thing that's going to take me out. So be patient, go slow, and know that there is an end to this. You're amazing. You're strong. You're kicking ass every day, even if it doesn't feel like it. You are doing something that most people can't even possibly imagine. And you are actually learning and growing from this experience. There are people out there that actually are past this and will say best thing that ever happened to them. And I'm really looking forward to that day because it's gonna happen. This is not terminal. We will get past this. You're strong, you're resilient, and we are going to have a kick-ass 2020. Big hugs, thank you.